Greenpeace kicked off its two-month scientific expedition in Edinburgh in the port of Leith. Um, we then went round uh, to the Bass Rock, which is an internationally significant uh, seabird colony. You've got the largest population of northern gannets there. We found huge amounts of plastic, you know, in amongst birds' nests, even, um, you know, birds picking up fragments of plastic, um, which is, you know, a horrible sight to see. I see things that perhaps because I'm here throughout the season, I'm aware of the changes that happen. Uh, there's been an ongoing project for about 20 odd years now, Save the North Sea campaign, and they're doing autopsies on foamers and seeing the stomach content. And if I were to suddenly give you a bowl full of plastic for breakfast, you would be horrified. That's what they're finding in some of these birds' stomachs. We found an egg in a female foamer, fully developed, but she starved to death because her belly was filled with plastic. Um, there's an incredible amount of seabirds around here. So we've got guillemots, we've got puffins, we've got razorbills. Uh, we know that 90% of seabirds worldwide have now eaten plastic. Maybe about 15% of puffins that we've been able to look at the stomach contents have had plastics in them. Any amount of plastic in there is going to reduce their ability to um, absorb the nutrients out of what it is that they are actually feeding on. Anything that's, that's floating in the marine environment that shouldn't be there in a plastic form is, is going to have a negative impact somewhere along the line. In the winter, we get oh, just staggering amounts of plastic washed up. I take about two to three sacks off Canna Bay every two weeks through the summer. In the winter, it almost, it, you're almost at the stage of giving up because you could go out every day and take a sack off. I uh, had to untangle the seal pup just, just last summer, which seemed okay, fortunately. Yeah. wonder I've... how many you don't find. Mm. Greenpeace has been conducting some surveys on some of the beaches around in the west coast of Scotland and they've been finding hundreds and hundreds of these plastic bottles. And what most people don't realise is that these plastics actually break down over time to become these microscopic pieces of plastic. Now these tiny pieces of microplastics are ending up um, being ingested by all sorts of marine organisms from zooplankton all the way up to whales and even they're found in some commercial fish species so they're also ending up in our dinner plates too. So we're currently on the Shants today on the west coast of Scotland in the Hebrides um, and we've been lucky enough to be able to um, do a trawl with our, our boats. Trawling about one to two knots and everything that's come through the mouth of the trawl passes a flow meter so we can calibrate how much volume of water is coming through the mouth. Uh, everything collects in the back of this sieve, it's called a cod end, and now we can remove this cod end and we can put it through some sieve and remove a lot of the biological matter. We'll be left with a sample of everything, um, small plankton and debris mm -hmm. and possible microplastics. And that'll all be collected in the sample, we'll sieve it through and that'll be bagged for later analysis. We've, we've found everything from plastic wrappers of, you know, chocolate bars or such like floating around, small chunks of plastics, microbeads, mm -hmm. um, and then under the microscope, even looking on board, we can find some smaller filaments of plastic. Mm. So yeah, but a lot of the stuff isn't obvious to the naked eye. Basking 
sharp area. Gonna sound. It's the second largest fish in the world. It's a very special creature. You know, they can be 11 meters in length. Um, colossal, um, but very gentle, very slow swimming, and feeding only on plankton. But one of the things that you, you tend to find with masking sharks is they aggregate around tidal fronts where you get a lot of debris along the surface, including lots of plastic. It's the same kind of thing you get with uh, a lot of whales that skim feed at the surface, in that when they're swimming along, um, filter feeding, they cannot avoid ingesting plastic to some degree. So I think that, that you can uh, allow these animals to ingest uh, large amounts of plastic over time, but it's going to have an effect. But quite what that effect is, I, I really don't know. It's clear that our oceans cannot stomach any more plastic and that beautiful surroundings like the one we're currently on in the Hebrides and the iconic wildlife that lives here, they should not become the final dumping ground for any of the plastic bottles that are simply you know, being thrown away, dumped in our environment and then through wind and waterways are at risk of getting into the sea and washing up on beautiful beaches like this one.